and the insights he gives us from time to time helps us to go forward. In dealing with his topic today, a critical analysis of the geopolitical history of the Bible, I'll just show you a difference. And every once in a while it's good for us to get holy, so we get holy right now. And I'll ask you to join me in a prayer. Sisters and brothers, Pastor Mike. Okay. Yes, sir. Use the boss, boss. 
Yeah. All right, now, that means that we're talking about geopolitical history of the Bible. That's called an ellipsis. Dash, 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 blank, dash, 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 blank. Continue. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Brother Pitta, may we continue? Yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Listen, a little bit of levity. She said, the other thing, don't take this too seriously. This is one of the things that makes us different as a people, that we can laugh at ourselves. <coughs> you know, gallows humor has gone a long ways to get us where we are. As a matter of fact, I feel that's one of the, the things that we're about to lose is that ability to look at absurdity and put it in perspective like the elders used to do and keep walking. We need to bring that back again. If you don't have that kind of innate sense of humility, you get inundated with self-importance. And that is a direct formula for destruction. So, talking about uh, an analysis of geopolitical history of the Bible, it means just that. We're going to look at the Bible because one of the things that I find about our people, and uh, I know other people the same thing, but I'm talking about us particularly because these are the people we're concerned about. By and large, the average African knows very little about the Bible. Don't question the Bible. Don't you question that because if you question that Bible, God don't strike you. You know, certain things you learn by road. So what is the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. I ain't read that in 60 years, but it's still stuck up in there. This is how you can get to these little things. Your fears get thrown in. So they tell you, don't question. Accept it on faith. Don't look at that. And if you look at it, God's going to come and strike you down. And this thing comes to us very early in life. Uh, and there's a whole history behind this. As uh, Brother Stedman just read, once you have accepted somebody else's, anybody else's version of your supreme being, you're in deep trouble. And the more you've accepted that, the harder it is for you to break that mold because you really feel that God or some force will strike you down. I always say then, you believe in God? Yes. Well, if you believe in God and God will strike you down for thinking, why did the Supreme Being give us the ability to think? It would have been much easier to perform a prefrontal lobotomy on us and just let us deal with the basics and go on. But if you have free will, then that means the ability to think. So what I'm saying, so many of the concepts that we get are contradictory. I don't know how many of you have ever been or uh, been proselytized or tempted to be proselytized by Jehovah's Witnesses. I have nothing against them personally, but I use them as what I have experienced as, a, as an extreme example of this kind of closed mindset. Uh, people will come into my home and they'll look at my library, which is extensive, and the theological section is extensive, and presume to start teaching me theology. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have to do this because uh, let me tell you about uh, the Bible. And I'm going to segue in and I says, which Bible are you talking about? What do you mean, the Bible? I said, last time I counted there was about 30 of them. Which one are you discussing today? Oh no, there's only one, the King James Version. <laughs> I said, well, if you... You don't have to go to any extremists. If you know any Catholic, the Catholic will immediately dispute that. Because Catholics don't use the King James Version. They use the Douay Bible. Uh, are you aware of that? What's the Douay Bible? And I'm not kidding you. This is, the, this is the mentality and the extent to our ignorance. Not only about theology in general, about, but about the Bible in particular. Now, a lot of that comes from not being dumb. Don't get me wrong. It's not lack of intelligence. What is missing and what causes this is an abysmal ignorance of history. Because you cannot get a concept of this thing they call a Bible, not a real concept, unless you look at the history. Bibles do not grow full grown out of somebody's head. There's a whole process. There's an interlinking. Religion is not just something about beliefs. Religion 
are systems of power, they are means of control, they are means of, of eating, they are means of persuasion. When we go back long before we look at Christianity, in order to understand these Bible and these books, we need to look at this world. And all people in the world have systems of beliefs. All people. There's no people on this earth that does not have a system of beliefs. And each system of beliefs are centered around myths. What I mean is all people have had a need. I don't claim to know why. I'm not a behavioral scientist except what I've learned by observation. And that I was taught by a woman who never knew how to read and write, my grandma. But her very brilliant lady nevertheless that always said to me, an ant is a small thing, but if you mash it, you find the guts. In other words, look to analyze something. There's always a kernel there. Don't just take something for granted. So therefore, when you look at human beings, and you see that all of these people, these groups, have some system of beliefs, the one thing that this tells us, without even going into which system of beliefs are correct and incorrect, it tells us that all human beings on this earth need psychologically, emotionally, historically, and culturally to have some means of explaining how and why they are here, how and why they get there. This is why one sees. Now, what are the first gods you see? The first things you see is the awesome forces of nature. Thunder does not play, y'all. And you don't have to go to no church to know that. Hurricanes ain't no joke. You can call them Mary, George, or what you want to. But when they move, you're in big trouble. Because their whole concept of Christianity, their whole concept of the supreme being, is a belligerent one. The Westerners God walks around hurling thunderbolts all the time. If you don't do this, he's always threatening you. God gonna strike you down. He's gonna do this or that and the other. All other groups have compassionate beings. They, they endow their God or gods with compassion. Once you set up a singular monotheistic deity, you have a big problem because that deity don't never sleep. He or she got to do everything. You got to deal with the rain, got to deal with the sunshine, got to deal with the Vestal Virgins and all of these things. It makes a lot more sense to create a system of beliefs which allows for a chief god or goddess, as the case may be, with a whole lot of helpers. Because that way you just pick out the god or the goddess you need. You go to his or her temple. And you know, because now the other way, this dude is listening to somebody who wants a car, another person wants a healing, another person wants a free trip to Jamaica, another person, and this, this one being, you think of this, how many, how many people are on this earth, right? Over, over close to five billion people. And you imagine, here you've come up, this Western concept of this supreme being who's sitting up there just absorbing all of these contradictory wishes. One person, one man is whispering, I wish you strike my, my wife down. Meantime, she's praying in the other room, kill my husband. <laughs> you know? And, and you know, you got all this. So, you, it's a, and it's a rational system. If you think about it, it is an irrational system. What then are the other reasons for this? We must look at the concept of control. Religion as control, the Bible or Bibles as vehicles of control. When we analyze these books as history and look at them within that context, we get a whole different concept of Christianity. We get a whole different concept of how it was distorted from whence it came. I find it very interesting when I look at the new revised version of the so-called King James Bible, and they now say that Jesus Christ was born in, sin, in, in 10 A.D. They can't, they can't argue. Some say 5 A.D., and some say he was born in 3 A.D., and some say 10 A.D. Now, the whole concept of B.C. and A.D. was based around the, Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. Am I correct? And they say anything that happened before the birth of Jesus Christ, and watch how they play the game. They count backwards going the other way, and count forward coming up this way. So already you've set up a value system based on how far something is away, which already starts to work 
on your mind. So the logical question then, if you can't even agree on what year the dude was born, you know, how are you going to agree on when and where the philosophy is? And you keep coming up with these definite statements. When we look at the history and the periods that these things are going through, the background of how that so-called King James Version came to be King James Version, or the Douay Bible came to be Douay Bible, and you walk around that and they say, oh no, there's another group, excuse me, How many of y'all are familiar with this? The lost books of the Bible. How can they be lost? <laughs> right? Either you got a Bible, right? So you lost books of the Bible, and you look and say, well, gee, who lost them? And then it turns out, <laughs> ironically, they never were lost. Yeah, the people who decided there would be a Bible was like the people who decided let there be, who said let there be light. They said, well, uh, this year don't fit with what our power concerns are. And so therefore we'll put that over aside. This doesn't fit, this, this can fit in, maybe we'll hook that in later. But already what you're doing, you're making a political, aren't you? You're not making a spiritual decision, you're making a political decision. I don't give a damn how you feel about the decision. It is still a political decision. That being the case, we need to then understand, or try to understand, that the concept of Bibles have always been as a means of propaganda and as a means of control. You may like that or not like it, but all cultures have learned early in life, what did you do? If you want to rule, as always from the beginning, as far back as we can go in history, there has been a connection and cooperation between the warrior and the priest, right? The chief warrior in, cult, in Western culture was known as the king, and the chief priest, as it came down, cast words with the pope or the bishop, or whoever the hell it was. But there was always a close cooperation between these two. And you see very closely, the priest's job was to get out and snow you, to threaten you with all kinds of hell's fire if you don't do this, and in case you didn't get the message, the warrior then bash your head across the head with a club. You know, if that was necessary, if that didn't get it, then they hung you or did what they wanted and dragged you to the street and you got on your knees. Once you were killed, once again the priest comes back and anoints you and gives you, ain't it interesting, we still do that, in this country when you, when they sentence somebody to death, uh, they always assume that you're a Christian. And just before they pull the switch or throw the cyanide capsule or turn on the gas or whatever the method is, they send in a priest to give you something they call the last rites. The assumption, of course, is that there's no atheists in foxholes. Don't believe that. You know, well, people, those who believe need to believe that. Um, I would argue that uh, if you looked at the people that have power, they're the ones that don't believe in nothing. And that's a reality. The whole point of this is to change our perception of reality. The idea that the meek shall inherit the earth. Of course, as long as you don't, you'll get no mineral rights, you get no oil rights, you get no diamonds, and of course you don't even get right to plant no trees above. But you shall inherit the earth. It is better to give than to receive. Uh, the priesthood, they always tell you, this, the cleric will point this out to you. Uh, servant, obey your masters. You will get, even though you are suffering catching hell here, y'all gonna get your reward on the other side. Nobody even poses the question, what the hell happens if there ain't no other side? Huh? Then I will have gone through hell twice. First I will have my butt kicked for how many years I spent on earth and didn't do nothing to change it. And now I'm out here in limbo for all eternity. Now you're ready to take all them Bibles and throw them away. But when you look at these stories. And whether you like it or not, that's what they are. They are stories. 